We missed Christmas. We did. Well, you missed Christmas. I did. I was here for Christmas. You were. I hope you guys had a great Christmas. I did. Then we say happy, happy holidays, yeah. right? Merry, Isn't Merry, that what Merry. you say to the people that I like. I also like saying uh, a Merry Chrysler, Happy Honda days. It's non, uh, you know, it's, it's non traditional. Welcome back to the No Big Banana Podcast. My name is Charles. My name is Justin. And we missed last week. We did. And I'm just going to start things off by dropping the bomb. Okay. That this is going to be our last episode for a while. Oh, no. I just need I need the time. You should have told me beforehand. To, fo- to focusing on. He's kidding. I did tell him he beforehand. Did. I need to. I need extra time to focus on the channel. And, uh, he does. And the album and stuff. So, but don't worry. The No Big Banana podcast is not dead. Oh, yeah. By no. any stretch. It will return. Much yeah. like one of my characters Much in like my the D&D Phoenix. campaigns. Oh. What? Just because you think it's dead oh. means nothing. Right. There will be at some point a victorious and triumphant return. Yeah. Maybe where, filmed. Wherein, yeah. Where it will be a higher production value. Yeah. So, how was your Christmas? It was good. You already told me you just got yeah. drunk and watched Die Hard. I did. Which is a Christmas movie. It's great, yeah. By the way, somebody... Oh, Melissa, mm-hmm. Sarah, made yeah. the argument to me. She said to me, so the real question as to whether or not something is a Christmas movie, the, the real deciding factor should be is if the plot could exist without Christmas. And so then I thought, huh. well, if that's, if that's your criteria... It's a Wonderful Life isn't a Christmas movie. Right. Or Nightmare Before Christmas, I guess, would be. Yes, because it it, I don't it know, hinges man. that's the whole plot is hearing, that he discovers Christmas. Hearing Alan Rickman say Yippee Kaye, motherfucker oh, in dude. that voice it just makes me Nothing makes me is happy. fucking funnier than Alice. Oh nothing's dude. funnier than Alice. Oh my god. Hans Bubby, yeah. I'm your white knight. <laughs> just coked out of his mind. So good. So awesome. And yeah. Bruce Willis just and he's the, like they're gonna kill you the story of that movie and how it got made is fucking insane it's also just like you know they wrote it as they filmed it i'm not surprised they were writing the script like i'm were, not surprised it was like you need three more pages by tomorrow for shooting yeah it's <laughs> like, not about right i mean like but but i will say like to its credit like it still holds up oh like, yeah dude. even the even the moment when he's like <laughs> There, there's some like sincerity when Bruce Willis's character is like put wrapping himself with the fucking um, the the fire hose and is like I'm fucking crazy. This oh, is fucking crazy. Yeah, yeah I'm never yeah. getting on another. And then he's like, ah, oh, shit. And he's like, I'm on your side, dick bags. And then just jumps off the side. It's awesome. <laughs> and dude, Reginald Val John- Von John Val Johnson. I think it's Maybe. Reginald Val Johnson. Von Johnson. Uh, Al. Oh yeah, Who Al's was still the, like the, the one dad of my favorite. from Family Matters. Yeah. Still, like, my fucking favorite. And then, you know who else I think is, like, an unsung hero of that movie is Argyle. Because, like, those yeah. those comic relief moments... Oh, they're so... There's nothing better than when... There's nothing better than the scene where uh, he throws the body out of the window and starts <laughs> shooting at him. And, like, hard cut to Argyle just, like, chilling in the limo. Yeah. Like, and the cop car's, like, behind him. And he's just, just like, like on the out phone of with control. his girlfriend. Yeah, he's like, dude. I told him I was going to be going off to Houston. I'm fine, baby. <laughs> when did I have a lot of you? And then, it's like, and then he just, like, starts opening the drinks in the back. It's so good. Yeah, man. Yeah. Die Hard's the shit. It's a great movie. Uh, Home Alone was another one that was brought up. Because because yeah. Christmas is not them. Christmas isn't required for that movie either. Yeah, but I mean, like I, th- I feel like I feel like at that point, you know, it, it's like the kind of person that's like a tomato is technically a fruit. It's like get the fuck out of here. Like you, it, like you're st- like nobody cares. Well, it's a, it's a holiday yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. Fuck off. That's true. Um, but I mean, you know, there are movies that would stand against that that criteria like sure. something like miracle on 34th street couldn't exist without christmas right elf couldn't exist without elf christmas is a surprisingly good movie holy still. shit dude it is so good better than uh old school and old school is a good ass movie old school is up there what's your there. favorite will ferrell movie Step Brothers. Step Brothers. By yeah. a fucking mile. <laughs> I'm gonna drag dude. my nutsack across the drum set. There no, no, you ain't. <laughs> there are no, there are no, no Will Ferrell movies are more quotable in my opinion than Step Brothers. I mean, there's Anchorman. I don't know, dude. Step Brothers is just like almost every fucking line in the dude. When he's like, when he's in the car and he's like, she's, he's like, I'm not gonna call him dad. 
She's like, yeah, yeah I, I don't expect you to call him Dad Brennan. And he's like, well, I'm not going to. And he's like, how do you know he's even a doctor or something? And she's like, he went to John Hopkins. And he was like, I smoke pot with Johnny Hopkins. Yeah. And she's yeah. like, you never knew anybody named Johnny Hopkins. And he's like, it was Johnny Hopkins and Sloan Kettering. And we were blazing that shit up every day. <laughs> yeah. Just like. I feel like, though, like, I, I think as a testament to it. I think I think Anchorman is more quotable, but just because like the first Anchorman and the second Anchorman are the perfect example of like, cause the first one's like Led Zeppelin. It's lightning in a bottle. You're never gonna catch it again. Right. You right. get one shot at it. You you shot your wad, and then the second one, there's like we're just gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna have thirty teams fighting each other right, in the street. Right. It's like you can't. You had Ben Stiller acting like he was Spanish, like <laughs> Spanish language news is here, bitches, dude. And Vince Vaughn, yeah, was a was a was a a diamond in the rough. There's, in that there are movie. so many good moments in the first Anchorman. Dorothy Mantooth is a saint. Yeah. <laughs> I, I may hate you, Ron Burgundy, but God damn it, do I respect you. And then, yeah, like, yeah. lets him off the ladder out of the bear pit. Like, Some <laughs> of those... when he goes in the bear pit, and he's like, you bitch, why did you make me do that? The bears are awake now. <laughs> like, oh, dude, I was watching, uh, I thought of you the other night, because we were watching, or it was like a week or so ago, we were watching Airplane. Yeah, dude, Airplane, I still think is still the good. funniest movie of still all Still funny. I was still laughing out loud. Like, I think I think jokes per minute, I think Airplane and Spaceballs still hold, like, the king throne for, like, jokes per minute and actual, like, I don't know, m- maybe it's just because, like, for me, Airplane relies more on um, visual humor than it does, like, actual, like, jokes. So it, it feels a little bit more... Um, like, like it, it's one of those things where, like, if you miss it, you have to go back and rewatch it so that you actually, like, get all of the jokes that were being told. I'm sure whatever's on the phone is really important. I mean, it's not like it's our last one, but... It is important. I know. I'm teasing. I don't know. I feel I feel the same way about, like, Ace Ventura, though, where it's, like, even though, like, it's it's a product of its time, it's still timeless for me. Oh, like, yeah. Like, well, I mean, some of that shit couldn't fucking exist today. Oh, yeah. The I mean, fucking Big Bad was a transgendered woman. Yeah. You know, that, like... Um, and, and, and not, not just... The whole scene where he's, like, crying in the shower. <laughs> not, just a trans, not just a transgender woman that was made into a joke, but a transgender woman that existed only as the joke. Right. Like, that was the bit. Yeah. Was that it was a transgender she had person. A, she had, she had a, uh, a sack. Yeah. There's so. even, like, the fruit salad moment where, like, they she gave him the fruit bowl, like, where she was tucking it. Oh, man. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. That's, like, the big reveal at the end. That's so crazy. It's wild. But, yeah, you could not make that movie again. But So, what about um, Jujutsu Kaisen? Oh, my God. And just the best anime of the year? Anime of the year? I, I New anime of the year? I don't know if I'd... Well, new anime of the year? Maybe. Dude. It's I a, mean, like for me... I would say, like, Tower of God's up there, too, with, like, new productions of the year that were, like, top I, tier for me. Tower of God, for me, had more... Listen... Let me put it this way. If Rack wasn't there, I don't think I would watch it. I think I think Tower of God like is setting up for a more like it's definitely more of an artistic expression, whereas Jujutsu Kaisen is just like they're enjoying what they're doing and they're just having a good time with it. It's so bitchin', dude. When he fucking is when when that guy has the moment where he's alone in the sewers after he gets out of there. Right. And uh, when he's just reflecting on, like, like interacting with Sukuna. Yeah. It's just... Oh, it just... When I saw that, I was like, this is... I'll watch a hundred more episodes of this. Oh, yeah. It's definitely like, setting up... Well, I don't think it's setting up for the same kind of level of, like, Black Clover or, like, One Piece or Naruto or any of those. Like, I don't think it's going to try to do that, but I think... No, but maybe, like, My Hero. Kind of, yeah. It's getting there. You really did hit the nail on the head a while ago when you were like, it feels like it's setting up in the same way that My Hero did. Right. Um, it's just backwards. And it, But it's, it's just... They set up the villain super early. That fucking early. moment when, like... And I know we talked about it beforehand, but that moment when he's like, these words came from my gut, and it was so true that it made every other statement I had ever made in my life feel like a lie. I'm a fucking kill you. And <laughs> yeah. then, like, it's like that black and white charcoal, and it's just his eyes just, like, radiate. And there's, there's even a moment where, like, Yuji looks like a curse. Right. When he's like screaming and then the guy's like, what, you're going to exercise me? And he's like, nah, I didn't fucking stutter. And then he proceeds to like headbutt his face into putty. Yeah. And then like kick him back. And then the guy shows up. I forget his name, but the the guy with the glasses that does the 7-3, the, the critical hit guy. 
Yeah, yeah. He's like, hang on a second. Why is his nose bleeding? Oh, and yeah. He's, he's like, because like, I hit him? Yeah, because I hit him at the beginning. He's like, <laughs> we need to talk about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like, that shouldn't have happened. That shouldn't have happened. And again, like, that moment when um, he, like, accidentally touches uh, Sakuna, and Sakuna's like, hey, bitch. Yeah, yeah. You don't fucking touch my soul. Also, I love that they explained it away the way that they did with, uh, because I had some uh, questions, mm-hmm. and I'm really glad that his that um yuji's conversation with the seven three sorcerer i think it's like nanaman not uh yeah nanaman i think yeah, that's yeah. his name yeah um i just like call him the seven three sorcerer yeah, he's just so cool but he um he like was explaining that the reason that things went down that way is that um the villain basically turned his little ball into a separate domain, right. which touches the inside of people's yeah. souls. Well, that's and so thing. when Yuji came in, yeah. it wasn't like Sakuna came out. No, he it was touched like he, him again. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. It was like and there's that moment like, being touched. when he like breaks through and he like looks at him, and there's like there's there's a moment of like clarity where Yuji's like, I didn't plan, I didn't think I'd get this far. Yeah, and he's like, so there's like almost a moment of like, uh oh, <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, yeah. Uh, I'm still going to fucking kill you. And then that moment happens where he's like, I fucking told you second time you weren't going to get out. Okay. Dude, Sakuna's so scary. Oh, dude, it's so good. <laughs> Whenever he's on screen, I'm like, anything Sakuna, could happen. Like, dude. Really, really does. Like he is the quintessential, like exactly what I, what I wanted out of like the big, bad, evil curse. Yes. Like even that moment when like Yuji's like, I will do whatever you want. And he's like, Look at you, posturing to God, willing to give up everything that you have. Yeah. And you can't do fucking anything. Yeah. And then just starts, like, cackling. And he's like, when he actually meets the patchwork guy, he's like, we had a good laugh at that idiot earlier. But don't you fucking dare come in here, learn your place, bitch. And then, like, ejects him from it. It was just a really good. Just, like, like, ripped him up to shreds. The second time, yeah. But the first time he was like, get the fuck out. I'm going to yeah, let yeah, this go yeah. the first time. There's not going to be a second time, bitch. Mm-hmm. And then the second time happens, he's like, what did I fucking say? <laughs> yeah. And then just like immediately like, ah. Oh. He's like, what do you, have got potatoes in your ears? Yeah. Or, like, it is really like, I, I do also really appreciate that like, I didn't think going into the fight, there was a part of me that was like, okay, well, Yuji's like, fist, like when he, when he fists people, it does like the first hit and then there's like the delayed secondary hit. It's like doom damage. Oh yeah, yeah, because in, in he uh, yeah, because it's the way that is the way that he uses his sorcery. It's like right. he it, it doesn't like he propels it. It's like delayed. Yeah. Actually, it's funny cuz like in One Piece, he's trying to Luffy's trying to learn like cuz he got the shit like he literally got one shot by um the the big bad of this arc and so he's trying to learn a way like because in one piece they use like um they call it like some different but it's the same kind of concept it's like hardening uh like they call it hockey but like there's a different one that's specific for like this arc where like you punch something but you don't actually touch it you send your hockey into them and then it erupts Mm. so luffy's like trying to learn how to do what yuji just does i just think it's funny that there's like that because like there's this entire arc where like Luffy's like, this is perfect. I can train, bring all these guys at me. And every time he's like, he's just beating the shit out of like waves of enemies. And he's like, that's not it. That's not it. More and more. And they're like, what do you fucking mean? It's not it. Like, you're just w- like, just wiping this entire place off the map. Yeah. Like, what the fuck do you mean? It's not. And he's like, nah, it's not right. More, more. It's, it's an interesting idea. Like, I didn't think that that had the same kind of implications of it being like a vessel or a soul. Right. In the same way, like I didn't imagine that there would be like the dichotomy between the two of them, but it's perfect, obviously. Yeah, I mean, it had to be. It's been really great, and then it's so sad that now Fire Force we're just having to wait on. But I'm not. I wasn't kidding earlier when I said I'm sincerely giving consideration to learning Japanese just so I can sing Inferno by Miss Green Apple. Do you know that the chick is a drummer? I'm not surprised. I mean, the drummer is a chick. I sure. said that wrong. Whatever. The drummer I've is. I've never a, heard the song. The drummer is. Yes, you have. I haven't. I skipped the intro. Oh, okay. Literally every you time. You don't know what it is? No, I'll hear like the first three All seconds right. of it and be like, oh, go. yeah, yeah. Okay, I gotcha. Yeah, I, I remember hearing the intro and then I skip. This is. This is fine. Just listen yeah. to this. If you think that this is anything less than an absolute banger, it's a good song. Unfollow me. It's a good song. I just don't, as a rule of thumb. 
Yeah. This is the first time I'm hearing the actual like, singer. Ralph. I'm glad that Ralph happened during this. You can't tell because we're not filming this, but like Charles is just like jamming. <laughs> and now Chad's going left and right. Alright, this is riveting content. Not that anything else has really been that riveting from the, from the podcast, but. Um, cool. Dude, listen. Everybody out there, if you don't already know that shit, go look it up. I'm sure Miss it's Green Apple massively Inferno. Popular. Oh, dude. It's got to have at least a couple mil on the... 92 only... million views yeah, on that not one. Not surprised. Um, yeah, they're a popular group. It's a good... It's like uh, Lark and CL, who did um, like Full Metal Alchemist's opening. Mm. Just That's the one that Dan was like, are you having fun? And oh, it's yeah, it, yeah. That group. Yeah. That, that, that chick's ripping on the drums, though. I believe it. Um... And then what's cool Sounds is like, like an actual talented version of Meg White from the White Stripes. All of the people, uh, all of the people that have done covers of it. Oh, there's yeah. a lot of them. It's got to be endless. So yeah. what else is going on in the world? Hey, have you heard about this Nashville thing? The bombing? Yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine? If, I'm I'm just trying to like. Can you imagine if Barack Obama was golfing after something like that happened? Well. Listen, We're just doing anything. Here's really. the thing, though. You say after something like that. Yeah. I don't know if you know this because I don't know if you've done your research. Sure. But I know I've. I'm, you've probably here been, we go. You've probably been reading. I know where this is going. You've probably been reading like stuff by journalists and stuff, and yeah, yeah. you know all of that made up stuff. Right, right. I've I watched a few YouTube videos. Yeah. yeah. So you're a master. You're you're. I I know what's going wasn't on. Wasn't that like the one of the original like moments <laughs> in our yeah. theme song? Full circle for yeah. this year Jesus. of 2020. Yeah. yeah, I've watched a couple of YouTube videos. I got it all figured out. Yeah, yeah. So what happened is is that the United States government. As they do, right? Contracted AT and T to a. Uh, yes, of course. <laughs> what they wanted to do was uh, they wanted AT and T to run an audit on the voting machines, right? Yeah. Now, because of course, AT and T, in their infinite wisdom, as corporations typically do, mm-hmm. stored all of that information from the audits in one place only, and that was in Nashville. Oh. So what this has been is get your tin foil this is, ready, it's everyone. part of the it's part of it's the It's not even made of tin foil anymore. It's, it's aluminum foil. What am I saying? It's part of the it's part of the cover up. Yeah. From the Democrats. Oh, for sure, yeah. Because they couldn't have that data get out. I I wonder I mean, what do you think is more likely, Justin? Do you think that it's more likely that there's a white man in this country who felt alienated and maybe had his life disrupted by his father having a poor relationship with the company that he worked for for 40 Mm -hmm. years and got isolated and probably had some depression and anxiety that was unchecked and unmedicated and had a manifesto and decided to do some who has a manifesto do some ted kaczynski shit and blow up at&t building do you think that that's more likely or what I just said before yeah. with AT and T and the contracting and the only one place where the data store yeah, and yeah, the Democrats because like a physical the, yeah physical you know it's not like there's like a cloud or anything. I love too the people that are like who would warn people about a bomb like um, somebody that just wanted to punish the company yeah and not hurt anyone sounds about right. It's pretty just, much any it's strange like, to me that I feel like it's even, gonna be like this for everything honestly, that ever man, happens like, from now on. Is it? But like, isn't that kind of like the thing? Like, even like school shooters will typically send out like a "Don't come to school today." Well, you know what I mean. Well, like, now hold on, because a lot of school shootings are Democrat hoaxes oh, as well. So yeah, it's a cover up. They got to get rid of all of the. They're they're trying to get rid of anyone that shows promise in the Republican Party. Anyone that goes to like Turning Point USA. Those kinds of people. Yeah. Can you imagine, like, what, what, what is going to happen to the Republican Party at this point? Because, like, the left's always been divided, and that's just kind of how they operate. And it's still kind of like it checks out eventually. Like, but it feels like there's really well, I, I don't know. There's part of me that thinks that there's actually like a, a divide happening in the Republican Party, and then there's also a part of me that's like, well, a lot of the libertarians that kind of jumped onto the Republican bandwagon because they like Trump are just going to detach themselves again and it's going to go back to normal but uh, I don't know I think I don't see it as much of us uh, as much of a division within the party so much as that I see that the party itself is changing and there are some people who will stay with it 
because because yeah, here's the thing I guess that's like, more accurate sure let me say it this way of all of the republican trump supporters that i know mm-hmm. only my mother has changed her opinions about trump so from a statistical okay. standpoint if you apply that to the rest of the country yeah, because you know even if you give the country some more leeway and say there's probably less people that support him i don't i feel like that i don't want to like... get into this narrative of well yeah the republican party's fractured because you know some people disagree with trump and and it's like show me find me a republican right, I mean, like that I, doesn't that didn't I, vote for I trump also, this year i also feel like the the kind of idea of like well i know this person well these people that i know like those are kind of subjective stories that don't really act accurately like reflect um like you know correlation is not causation or anything like that but i do think that you're correct in your assumption that like there is just a change in the republican party although i feel like it's just it's such a strange like i mean there are like 129 something like senators yeah who signed on to that texas bullshit yeah and the people that voted for them were happy for that yeah that's the thing. And it's like, wild to me. And like, the other reason that I think that it's changing is you're starting to see the Republican Party do things that you would never have thought in a million years you would see them do. Oh, like, yeah. for example. Completely throw away everything that they they're, have there. They're not only in support of government handouts, but they're demanding more. How strange is that, too? Like, you, like That's strange. The other but thing. But I mean, like, just in general, like, the whole the whole thing about that that blew my mind is that, like, it, who was it? Uh, Mnuchin, that fucking, like encephalopod like he was the one that was like wagering down the price for, right like, right the handout like that was trump's guy so is it is it that trump's trying to do like a single like this is the most chaos i can sow before leaving or is it i want to win favor with the country even though i've already lost it's the second thing so here's the thing is that from a political standpoint in terms of like actual legislation and things that are done, Mm. people will remember what he did before he left office. Right. And people will now remember that one of the things that he did before he left office was demand that the bill that was proposed and agreed upon between the Congress and the Senate be raised. And that's a thing that he'll be remembered. He did that. He, it it was a, it was a, Uh, it was an image thing. Yeah. It was a, it was a look at me. I'm fighting for you because, Hey, here's the craziest thing this is the first time in his presidency that i've agreed with him and he's leaving in 20 days yeah yeah you know like it's so the other thing that i think that's changing in the republican party is that they they're seemingly in support of regulations on businesses which is another very weird thing so super because counter to like your standard fiscal conservative we just watched this thing on um dating apps and the danger of dating (sighs) apps and these women women are assaulted on these apps and there's this crazy woman on there mm-hmm. who is basically st- making it okay Cupid's job to mm-hmm. regulate these people that are on there. That's an impossibility. And it's like I understand the one thing about her argument which is that like assuming that they know, if they know, right. that's one thing, but you can't make it okay Q's job to to screen serial killers or rapists any more than you can make it the job of the grocery store right. or the library or shit man even like or the fucking public park i mean it's the same like, thing with like um what's that one thing that donald trump is trying to like well that's what it is so that so that that all ties into this because she, the complaint is, is that one of the issues is this uh section 230 that's it yeah so section 230 basically states that you as a website cannot be held liable for third party discretions basically you can't get sued right it's the same as like you're pretty much protected from everything yeah yeah which is pretty much true of any business it's how it works right like if 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 somebody a whole foods and somebody rapes you in a whole foods you you can't can't sue sue whole foods foods, right that's not how that works. I mean, you could if, you know, in assuming theory, that they sure. knew about it and. Right, like they let the guy in and but gave, not, gave him the key to the locker in the back. Right. Like, but not just simply for the fact of like. It happened in all Oh, foods. well. And so I understand that that legislation might need work. Sure, sure. Um, but you certainly can't come in there and say, well, let's get rid of it. Because then what you do is. You have all of these crazy people doing this like stuff that's not really illegal, but it's fucking awful Mm -hmm. and posting it online. Right. And then all of the Republicans come out of the woodwork and say, well, now, wait a minute. Now, this isn't okay." And it's like, well, I'm sorry. Are you talking about censorship? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm sorry. 
like that's it's like I understand the argument and I understand that it's coming from a place of look like people have got to take responsibility and be held accountable yeah. but it's also insanely lofty and unrealistic to say that it should be match.com's job to right. to screen out the weirdos it's yeah. like match.com is in the business of fucking making a place it's where people fucking. can come together use, uh, and statement and meet <laughs> yeah. and stuff like it's not they're not going to be in business I like think, i saw this thing that was like oh looks like facebook's going to start getting charged uh, it looks like this no, new no. law in poland says that no. if they censor stuff it's going to be charged two million dollars and i said fine go ahead and do that and then there's no more facebook yeah sorry Get youtube of and it's all of this shit like, that you use every day doesn't exist isn't anymore. it funny too like because i think about that as well like t- to your point earlier i do think you know, it is worth noting that, like, the the laws of our society were not designed for the type of society that we currently live in. Of course not. But the other thing about it is, like, it is kind of funny that, like, I hear a lot of Republicans make this claim that, like, you know, Facebook, uh, Twitter, all of these social media networks are infringing upon the rights of conservatives to urge whoever. It, it tends to be right-leaning. The stifling their free speech and it's like no their free speech is allowing the platform to be the way that they want it to be like right you don't get to decide what facebook gets to say or not say like, yeah you know who gets to decide that facebook. facebook exactly and it's like also your point doesn't make a lot of sense when you think about like steven crowder and like ben shapiro and all of these other or like, alex jones right like, is an even more dangerous example like and and like he's still doing fine yeah you know what i mean like it, well, it's weird to me that the Republicans would say that it's Facebook's job to not censor, but also the KKK can exist. Right. It's like you can't have yeah. that both ways. Yeah. Like, because here's the thing: you can't have your racism. Besides, and eat aren't it too. you fucks the free market people? Yeah. You aren't would think, you right? the laissez faire like, crowd so that says that me. says that the market will just work itself out, and if people don't like being censored on Facebook, then nobody find will, your, people find will just a find place. a new place yeah. to go. That's I mean, that's what's so confusing to me. Like. That's why I feel like there is a little bit of, like, pause in my assumption that, like, the Republican Party is just, like, shifting gears into a different Republican Party. Because, like, it feels like it is so counterproductive to every, like, and I know that it's not, like, Donald Trump's fault, but, like, it's caused this, like, chasm, like, this rift, where it's, like, there's these people who are conservatives, who are, like, true Republicans who are being cast as rhinos, because they're not hip with the new, strange, odd, oddly sensational, like, new version of capitalism. Dude, it's when like I Coke, was... It's like new Coke. When I was 15, if you would have told me that in 2020, I would be watching a clip of Jim Jordan arguing that companies have too much power. Right. I would be like, what? That's that not makes, possible. That's not Republicans what that is. are the whole th- that's their whole platform yeah. is being able to do what you want, make as much that's money as you want, treat is. your employees however you want. It doesn't matter. But and again, how like, fitting of them and yeah. to be so hypocritical. How political of them to be yeah. like, "Oh, well, because it's affecting me now." Because now I can't say Maybe. whatever I want on YouTube. Now it's an invasion There's of free speech. There's a little speech. note under what Donald Trump says that this shit's bullshit. Just wait until the riots and shit gets burned in January. Just it's, wait until all yeah. of a sudden now that's a that's totally fine and it's free I mean, speech. He's even like he, like the weird thing is, is like Donald Trump's even turning on Mike Pence because he thinks that Pence can like do something for him. And it's like nah, dog. He's just there to count the votes. He doesn't get to choose which votes to count. Dude, can we? I mean, Mike Pence like most. Most just like yes. fly on the wall fly on the head. VP ever. I mean, even I never, I didn't think that we could get like less. I gave a fuck about VP than, than Cheney. Yeah. God, um, remember Cheney? Or even Gore for that yeah, matter. Like, straight up. I mean, the last couple of VPs, even Biden didn't do too much when he was there. Yeah. He was just the hype man for Obama. But, I mean, nothing. And and a lot of it is just, you know, being buried in in Cheeto's shadow, right? Like, But it's just amazing to me that, like, he's the most under-the-radar VP probably in our history. It's also just, like, it is striking. I I think the other thing that that Donald Trump has revealed um, is that most of these so-called conservatives are fair-weather conservative in the sense that, like, they talk about like having all of these like ideals and like 
beliefs, even like Pence, like with his religion. It's like, if you were truly religious, I don't think you'd get on a ticket with Donald Trump. Donald Trump's pretty much the antithesis of what your what your religion preaches. So like, yeah, you're but nobody that's swallowing a big pill. Nobody that says they're religious is religious, right? No, like anybody, that's what I'm saying. Anybody that's a true Christian probably wouldn't tell it's just you a about way, it. Yeah, it's, it's just a, it's just Mike. It, it, that's the thing I hate most is when people use their religion as a shield for their own hatred of others. Well, yeah, I think that that's the most like. Anti-Jesus thing. thing ever? Yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. like, nah, fuck. The, if you're sick, fuck you. Well, I saw that meme uh, recently that was like, if Jesus would have existed today. Oh, yeah. And he's like, feed the poor, uh, love your neighbor. And uh, all the people around him are like, libtard. Yeah, yeah. Like, snowflake. Dude, those conservative Jesus memes are some of my favorite memes. It was like, Paul, if I gave you bread, you'd ask for bread every day. Right. Make your own fucking bread, Paul. Yeah, pretty you much. Know, like... Like, look, if I gave you the ability to walk, you wouldn't appreciate it. Exactly, yeah. So, you know, you can either earn... It's your fault for being poor. Right, pretty much. It's going to be nine ninety five to make me turn this water into wine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm, I think He's that... also brown, so he wouldn't be allowed in the country, so... That's true. Yeah, he probably wouldn't. He would have been on. The, oh yeah, he would have definitely East. at the at the minimum he would have been randomly selected at the airport. Dude, I, th- I think it was like <laughs> um, Vic, uh, like pissed, like ticked off Vic, that guy. Oh, Vic DiBattetto. I, I love fucking him. love that guy. But there was one recently where he was like going off about like being angry that they were trying to change the gender of Santa, and I was like, who gives a fuck what gender they want to get? Like, who cares? You still have your Santa. It's not affecting your Santa in any way, shape, or form. It's the same with Jesus. Also, it's like anybody can have whatever. Im- like, don't know if you guys knew this or not, but there's a war on Santa. Also, Santa's not real. Yeah, this is the Little Mermaid I mean, like, debate all over again. It's like who I gives don't fucking a fuck? Care. Yeah, it's like, and, but like the thing was, is he was like, it's based on this real guy, so it's a guy. What does it matter that it's a guy? It's like it doesn't matter that it's a guy. It also shouldn't matter to you if somebody wants a Santa in their house. That's a chick. Who the fuck yeah, cares? It doesn't. It doesn't matter. It, it means nothing to it you. Mean, it means it's the same with like someone being gay. It's like, I don't, it doesn't fucking affect my life. What do yeah, I care? It means less than nothing to you, which yeah. is, it's so weird because so many of these, and it happens both ways. Mm-hmm. So many of these judgmental Republicans and Democrats alike. Yeah. They're so fucking into everyone just else's like, business. They're just like, like they're foaming at the mouth to tell you why you're doing wrong stuff. Yeah. Well, but, it's, but it's if because, anybody yeah. ever even suggests them, you know, it to them. Right. Then it's like, oh, well, that's an assault on my family and, and you can't right. do that. And that violates my freedoms. And it's one of those situations where it's like the idea is like if you are counter to whatever is like people will think I'm popular online. If I say that I'm against this or that I'm for this. Oh, it's virtue you know signaling. I mean? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, it, that just ends up what it what it becomes. And so it's like, it's not really about the actual issue at hand. Because it's like, honestly, I, I don't care if, you're, if your Santa is a fucking lizard. I right. I don't fucking care. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter at all. But it, but yeah, but it doesn't mean anything. Like, you can it's say... It's very it, weird. It's the same with, like, when people are like, there's a war on Christmas. It's like, fucking being included... Like, when I say, like... I usually like, and you've heard me say it, it's like, you know, uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, all that good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like the actual platitude itself has no, I don't care if you tell me to have a Merry Christmas or if you tell me to have a fucking Happy Kwanzaa. I don't fucking care. Right, You're saying something nice to me, so I'm not going to take it in in like a, well, that's not actually what I believe in. It's like, it's like if I were like, because like, you know, I'm I'm an atheist, so it's like if somebody, if I sneeze and someone says God bless me, I'm like, well, actually... Um, God I don't, doesn't. Yeah, I yeah, don't believe, I don't believe in, God. in God. It's like get fucked. Yeah, yeah. Like, what does it matter? They're saying something nice to you. Like, accept the platitude and move on with your fucking day. So this episode, I'm pretty sure airs on New Year's Eve. It oh, does. No shit. Oh shit. Yeah, dude. Okay. So in the spirit of that, are you this ask what our fucking... year, no, no, oh, no. I was like, don't ask what me do what do you think? Is. What do you think the craziest shit that happened this year was? The craziest shit? Yeah, yeah. Like not necessarily the worst, because I feel like course, most COVID. people would argue COVID, but right. like. What do you think, like, the most, like, out-of-nowhere shit was? That's tough. Because there was a lot of it. The monolith was weird. The monolith was strange. Was that ever really ever explained? No. Or was just was it just an artist? It was kind of or? a hype thing. I don't even know. I just remember seeing headlines about the monolith, and I was like, cool. 
Yeah, that's a strange one. It's just an odd one. Um, maybe the fires in Australia were really crazy. Um, but that one's not like... But the thing about it is, like, if you're asking me, like, what the craziest thing was, that's not so far out of left field. Like, it makes sense. Like, the planet's heating up. Like, of course. It's the same with California. Well, yeah. You know what I mean? So it's not that crazy. Like, it's not like... Um, okay, so the most bizarre things that have happened in 2020. Oh, there's like a list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course there is. Um, oh, there's a movie on Netflix. Apparently a star went missing. Uh, mystery drones over Colorado and stars, Nebraska. Stars die all the time. The murder hornets. Uh, a monkey stole COVID samples. That was pretty fucking insane. Yeah, that one's weird. That one was almost like felt fabricated. Poland accidentally invaded the Czech Republic. Whoops. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess, I guess those were the ones. What else, what else is on there? Weirdest Moments of the Year by Andy 100. Let's see, that plane got shot down over Iran. Yeah. Um, and then we just, like, stopped talking about that altogether. People hey. were actually making memes about World War Three. That is pretty crazy that hey. there were actual memes being made about it. Here's a question. Yeah. Uh, this is just uh, this is just out of curiosity. Just um, just curious. Uh, just see if you know or sure. if you may might have any leads. Where did all the Save the Children people go? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I haven't fucking seen one of them. Yeah. For a month. Yeah, save Coney, Coney 2012. It was very strange um, because it seemed like so important. It was a huge thing. Right? And yet, all of a sudden it's gone. It's just it was the same with the caravan, man. It was nobody like, talks it, about it, it, it anymore. A, it was a hot. Like I said the other day when like someone was like, "Well, can't we see how many caravans come back?" And I was like, "Did you just hit me with a caravan line in 2020?" Like, yeah, yeah. It's the same thing. It was like to save the children. Um, monkeys apparently run riot in a in a Thai city. Thai city. I don't know. In a Thai it. city. In a Thai city. Pentagon released UFO videos apparently. Oh yeah, that's true. They did do um, that. Those Air Force videos. Lasange in the Wembley Stadium history. I guess I don't fucking know. Everyone became obsessed with Tiger King. That was weird. I still haven't seen it, and I refuse to watch it. Not it's not. It's, like a it's really thing. not good. Like I feel I like I just don't care. To see I feel it. like I'm not a better person for having watched it. I feel like I'm a worse person for having watched it, because like early on, in the first like 20 minutes, I was like, I don't think I can watch this. Oh, remember when people thought Kim Jong Un was dead? Oh yeah, that was the thing that happened. Whoa! Uh, Elon Musk and Grimes baffled everyone with their choice of baby names. Oh yeah, well, I mean, he's a fucking eccentric genius. Surprised. That doesn't uh, surprise me. The Rock pulled the gates off of his house, apparently. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, he posted the picture on yeah, IG. Yeah, there's the IG. Photo. <laughs> he couldn't. He couldn't yeah, get Star out. Star went missing. The fucking gate it didn't, it broke. Didn't go out. It just disappeared. The the fucking gate broke. So your boy just ripped it off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, QAnon supporters thought that JFK Jr. was going to become Trump's running mate. Well, that one's. Uh, I mean, Miley he pr- Cyrus claims she once had an experience with an alien after being chased by a UFO. That chick's Not surprising. out of her mind. Yeah, an airline offered people a flight to nowhere and it sold out. That doesn't surprise me. Doesn't surprise me. Ben Shapiro sang the lyrics to WAP. Oh, that was pretty good. God, that was a pretty good one. Can you even call that singing though? It was really more of just like he just recited. <laughs> also, someone them. just posted that uh, Smithers with oh, the strippers yeah, yeah. on him. Oh, um, man. Who did we lose this year? There was a year? reverse waterfall in Australia. Murder hornets, yeah. Um, water discovered on the moon. That was cool. Oh, yeah, Brexit happened. That was a thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it's been a weird year, man. How about Kobe? How about Kobe as a contender for the craziest shit? That was pretty strange. I mean, not only to lose him so long, to, to lose him so young, but in a fucking helicopter yeah. crash i mean the odds of that are just, just like banana sandwiches yeah. it's really staggering Chad, was, chadwick boseman died this year yeah, but that i mean that wasn't that, that was wasn't, out of nowhere well no because i mean he was battling well, he cancer was for sick a long time, right yeah. yeah regis philbin died this <clears throat> year but also what a fucking boss that he did all those movies while stage four yeah like that is really gangster nuts yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll be remembered for a long time. That wrestler Brody Lee just died. He wouldn't. He wouldn't. He wasn't even forty. I don't think. Um, there was a. There was a. Wasn't there? Oh, uh, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez playing Among Us on Twitch. Oh, that was yeah. A weird that one. was wacky. Um, well, not really. I mean, the Democrats. That's one of their things, yeah. right? Like, but get like, in the with fact the that kids. it worked. But the but the fact that it was actually like not a Pokemon Go to the polling places, but like an actual like connection with the yeah. youth. Uh, Tommy Lister died. I don't know who that he is. He played Debo in Friday. I nothing in that sentence made Wh- any sort of sense. Wh- what? To me. I have no idea who that is, who that character is, what that I've never seen Friday. What 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 is it? 
I'm being legit right now. I, I don't. It, I'm assuming it's a movie. Alex Trebek died this year. Yeah. Um, that's a that's a rough one. That one Although that one he lived hurt. for way fucking longer than I thought he would. Sean Connery died this year. Yeah. Another one taken by 2020. But, you know, he's... Sean Connery's a weird one because he was always, like, a guy that I loved and respected as an actor. And then right. I found out that he was, like, totally cool with hitting women. And I was yeah. like, wait. Yeah. Yeah. All of a sudden, those wait, scenes... Sean. In, all, all of a sudden, those scenes in uh, the fucking early... Uh, Early James Bond movies is like, oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, that wasn't really, that was method acting. Eddie Van Halen died this year. Yeah, that was it. That one did, that one. And I yeah. don't even need to see this on the list. I know Neil Peart died this year, oh, which fuck. was fucked because he was only like 67. Um, and meanwhile, the fucking uh, drummer in Def Leppard is like missing limbs and still kicking. <laughs> yeah. And fucking uh, Keith Richards is still alive. Like, that's that's the craziest shit. Uh, obviously, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Yeah. Um, I think that one was the one that loss. like hurt the most for me. Like, the one that I was like, fuck, man. Because, like, yeah. that one had, like, it wasn't just, like, somebody that I respected, like, a musician or an actor or, like, you know. But it was somebody whose, like, death actually, like, was going to shape the country moving forward, you know? Oh, yeah. It was a fucking bummer about Chadwick Boseman, but, like, a real bummy that now we have fucking... Um, six out of three or six out of nine are on one side. Yeah. It's just not okay. It's like, also, what's the worst like, that Trump can do? A point three Supreme Court. Oh yeah, Chichi Devane died this year too. That's oh, yeah. awful from RuPaul. I, I was gonna say I was like I don't know. Chichi, yeah, she was a drag queen on RuPaul's Drag Race. She was only thirty four. For some reason, I don't know who this person is. Um, uh, fuck, I forgot the name. Wilford Brimley died this year. Dab is. I shouldn't make fun of that. Well, not I actually know him more from Walker. Texas. He was Ranger. on Walker Texas Ranger. I've yeah, never dude. seen Walker Texas Ranger. What the fuck, I'm dude? Telling you, man, there's a lot of shit I haven't seen. Listen, dude, Friday, fuck that. Like you're white and you're from like Portland. That's fine. Oh, but I'm not from Portland. Don't. don't where are you from? Vancouver. Which is oh, Portland. so even wider. Yeah. yeah. Um, Did you know at one point it was actually Vanport? There was a, it was a connected city across the Columbia, and then they separated into two cities. Whoa. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I guess. Kind of. Not really. The, I've dude, almost died there. Walker, Texas Ranger. Okay. You know how we used to make that Let's Watch Bad Stuff yeah. where we would watch shitty movies? Yeah, I, yeah. MST3K? Yeah. MST3K would have a fucking field day with it. Walker. The shit that happens in there, dude. Okay, let me just tell you this, the best that I can remember from this episode. And after this episode, a friend of mine was silent for about an hour. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't talk. He was shut down because it was just so insane. So there's an episode where Walker has to... He runs. The, the villain is... That wasn't even funny. The villain is a... The villain is an Indian guy, or I should say a Native American guy. Sure, it want to be PC. Um, who, uh, also accurate. Yeah. <laughs> he's, a, he's a Native American guy who was like a ghost. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, he could make multiple clones of himself. And at the end of the episode, Walker's standing there with like a gun or a knife or something. Sure. And there's like 10 of them. And he the way that he tells which one is him is by the sweat on his cheek. And okay. I mean, they are like a hundred feet from each other at night. Of course. And Walker's like, he just, you, you don't learn this until later in the moment. He just like shoots the guy or whatever. And right. it's the right one. Of course. And yeah. so then they're like, how did you know Walker? It's like one of those and moments. He's like, like, yeah. Oh, well, you know, the, the, the sweat on his cheek. Fucking, I could tell he was the real one. Fucking, and it's that for seven seasons. That I mean, gunshots that no wonder, blow up like, vehicles. I never really like, understood the the jokes. You know the the Chuck Norris jokes. Dude, shit just explodes. Just it just explodes. It's yeah. just like what caused that? What brought this what's on? That, what's that one show that like old people watch? Matlock. It's like Matlock with explosions. Yeah. <laughs> It really is, dude. That's you know, I've it's actually so insane. Okay, so do you, do you want to know what his real name is? I'm assuming it's not. So in the show, his name is Cordell Walker. 
But he finds out later. Cuck first name. That his real last name is Firewalker. That's so dumb. And that he's like, he has Native American blood in him. That is so dumb. And then his partner is Jimmy Trevett, just the gooberest goob you've ever fucking seen. Of course. And then Wilford Brimley plays CD. I've also, so I've never seen that. I've never seen Battlestar Galactica. We've talked about this before. Yeah. BSG, um, you gotta watch. I've never, I've only watched one episode of Doctor Who. Doctor Who, you might not like. You would really like Battlestar. I'm sure, I actually like, it, it's on my list of things that I do want to watch. But, like, Doctor Who, like, I watched one episode and it was the one with the fucking uh, statues coming to life or the whatever. The mannequins. That's the first. I don't fucking, I don't. I that's don't, the first episode of the new, of the new version. I don't care. I don't fucks with that. Listen. Here's what I would say. If you ever had an inkling to watch Doctor Who and you wanted the Doctor Who that you watched to be good, just only watch the Matt Smith. Not Matt Smith. Not Matt Smith David Tennant. I was going to say, like, that sounds counter Matt to Smith, everything I've heard. Matt Smith is meh. David Tennant was, is, uh, the only, people would argue, the best Doctor. Yeah, the quintessential. I- including the 60s. Like, right. Tennant is just... But I mean, it's it's David Tennant. Right. Like it's you know he was so he's so I, great I just, in everything he does. I guess I guess like yeah, I, I picked a bad one to start up, but it like left a sour taste in my mouth because like that's one thing that like I would say probably the only thing that me and Markiplier have in common. I don't fucks with mannequins, dog. I don't I don't I don't, oh, I don't yeah. play with that. Anything that's like partially per- a person, but like not like dolls, mannequins. Stat like I don't. Yeah, I don't like stuff that hides stuff. I don't like clowns and mimes. I'm yeah, like, I'm not into that shit. I'm not about that. Anybody that's trying to hide their face, yeah. I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah, why, why are you, why are you being like that? Although now, what do you do? You do you do resolutions? I don't know. I haven't. We I think we've talked about that before. I don't. Why I don't. not? Because why like, wouldn't you try and better yourself, Justin? Because like it, it's not like a matter of like now's the time to better myself. It's like. You should always be looking at, like, improving. And I also don't think that, like... sounds like a cop-out. Well, I feel like it's more of a cop-out to be like, well, now that it's January 1st, I'm going to change my life. That's true. I will agree with you on that. I do think there is a a certain level of bullshit to the idea of... There's bullshit either way, so it's like, whatever. Do you have any resolutions? Um, Not directly, I guess. Um, There's a couple of things that, you know, I'd like to work on my uh, health. Sure. um, Mostly just because, like, I'm starting to feel it. Yeah. Um, you know, oh, dude, I fucking being like... this fat for so long, it's like up to this point, it's been sustainable, <laughs> and I'm reaching. <laughs> I mean, truly, yeah. I'm reaching that hump of no turning back. Right. You know, like because you know, once you get to like forty, you can't really, dude. I fucking just like turn your life around I from like a health wrong? standpoint. I slept wrong the other day, and like I had a crick in my neck, and I had that for like a fucking week oh dude and i was like this is how i die my fucking shoulders and my knees i just like i already can tell and then i've got my friends neck, that are back. like i've got friends that my are pussy and my crack i've got friends that are a bit older that are in you know are, that are similar sizes that are now having knee surgery and yeah i'm just so happy that 2020 is over I, I, just, I am not. I hold, I'm are not, you in the camp that's not holding out hope? No, that's an interesting camp considering like where you were pre-election. Yeah, no. like it's, it's strange to hear you say that you're not at this point, man. Like our I, roles again, have reversed in that regard. I think real. that I think 2021 will bring new hope. No, and new life. No, this, this ain't fucking Star Wars. There ain't no new hope. This is a we'll continuation see. of bullshit. Like I, I am still in the camp that like come to, like. I think that's part of the reason why I really enjoyed uh, New Year's Edition when you were like the ball stops at four, and I was like, I knew it, I knew it. Like, <laughs> oh this yeah, is how yeah. it's actually going to go down. Although, like in my mind, like I'm waiting for the Dark Souls music to start up, and then like Godzilla's health bar to show up in the sky. Like, right, that's what I'm expecting at the end of 2020. Well, yeah, and then there's the the bit about 1159, 1160, 1161, 1162. Yeah, straight up, like I I don't. <laughs> well, plus, like, man, like I mean. It, like it's the same thing how I feel about resolutions. It's like the the, the, the it, same reason why like Mercury's in retrograde has no fucking bearing on my life. Like why I don't believe in astrology. Why I don't yeah. like I don't care about any of that stuff because it's like nothing nothing fucking changes just because like we've arbitrarily set this as a as a new year. You know what That's I mean? That's true. Although like, I mean, from the election standpoint, sure, um, I do think that. Uh, 
I'm I'm thankful. I I'm, think it could have gotten a whole lot worse. But like, well, yeah. I mean, it certainly could have gotten still a lot can. better too. Yeah. I mean, because here's the thing for me: like, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat or not, I get if people don't like Joe Biden because I don't I like don't. Joe Biden. I voted for him and I don't like the guy. But I don't get I why have people that in, a, in a public. Forum. I don't think I don't get why people like legitimately, like non ironically, non chaotically, like Trump. Yeah, it, it like if you're somebody like like if you're somebody who likes the chaos yeah. of it all and is like enjoying watching like, things burn, like, I I, un- I actually understand that. I, right, it's the same with like voting from the first time. It's like if you feel disenfranchised by a system, you want to throw a Molotov cocktail into it, burn the motherfucker to the ground. Right, like, I get that, I understand that. But now, like four years in, it's like he's not doing that. He's not doing anything for us. No, and well, and like that, and was, he hasn't, and and he's, and what's weird is that he's been able to convince people that he has, and it's like is, I think that is the most, I think that is what's going to be remembered about his legacy more so than like the tweets or like the weird, horrible shit he said or the things that he's done. The fact that he has been able to, um, you know, because like I think I think that's the thing that really is the driving factor for all of this is that he has he has somehow subdued a section of the of our population into being misled in a way that like we have never seen before on a scale that we've never seen before. Well, here's the thing, man. I think that he was the perfect storm because when you consider the amount of disenfranchised citizens, yeah. Um, you know, just from a statistical standpoint, it kind of had to happen. It's almost as going if to at some point, yeah. it's almost as if Trump is, and, and you actually said this early on there, the, he's not the problem. He's the symptom. Yeah. So like, and I agree, like, I don't think that it, it's he's as the if byproduct. he's not the actual, like, yeah, I think that too many liberals treat it as if this, this, he's this the big smooth bad. talking charlatan came along and swept up America. And it's like, no, 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 no. That vacuum has been there. Yeah. He just, he just it. stepped into it. Yeah. Like, you know, he is 100% the, the him existing. If anything, should be a wake up call to members of Congress right. and the Senate that the American people are so willing to not feel fucked over by this systematic think, bullshit they've created that they'll send Donald Trump in there. I think part of it too is that like you you also have in Donald Trump like you know there was that there was that um I think it was actually at a turning point USA recently where Mike Pence had said like the, the liberals want to make the rich people poor and the poor people um, comfortable. And it's like, right. Okay. And like, what's wrong with making poor people comfortable? Well, I think but the, that's the issue thing. is rich people. Well, that, being that's poor. that exactly. Like the conservative party has always been that of like money is king. Same with like businesses, right? Like being able to fuck over anyone. So when you have somebody who seems to be this like perfect businessman, of right. course he walks out on stage and he sweeps the sweeps the ticket. Right, right. You know, and so then like they have to deal with the ramifications of like what that what that like what that will actually do to the party because they found their perfect like he's the golden goose. Like Well yeah, it is weird too that like um you know, this idea of well, they're going to go after the rich, and I don't like that. It's like, bro, you mow lawns. Yeah, you wouldn't be allowed in Mar-a-Lago. Like, you're going to clear... You call yourself a Trump girl. He wouldn't even, like, cheat on his, like, second wife with you. And he would have cheated on his second wife with anybody. <laughs> you're gonna, you know what I mean? You're going to clear 45 this year if you're lucky. Yeah. Again, like you're not making the kind of money away. that the Democrats are going after. In fact, the type of people that Democrats are going after are the people like Bezos. Yeah. That you're now you complaining about, about. Yeah, right. Like when they talk about like Trump's tax cuts, it's like they don't mention that like you're not part of that tax cut. Right. Like, yeah, you, talk you don't about, get to do that. No, that's not for you. Like, it's like, oh, he bet the system. It's like he didn't beat the, like he be. They're acting as if anybody with enough smarts. Yeah. And it's well, like, again, it's, no, it's no. Like money is equivalent to morality for them. I love, by the way, and this reminded me of it so vividly, and I'm so happy about the backstory of the 7-3 sorcerer. Oh, yeah. And his being on Wall Street. Oh, and yeah. like legit, like saying to the girl in the store, like, I make people who have money more money. Yeah, I don't. It doesn't make sense for me to exist. It doesn't and make sense like, that I make more money than you do. Right. 
when you offer a service to society that I do not. Right. And, you know, the problem I think comes back to something God, that, that was I've so always... like uh, real quick, though, like that was so I, I was there was a part of me that was ready for him to die when he was ready to die. Oh, I know. And I think too. that's why when Yuji shows up and like, I didn't expect to get this far. It <laughs> like, was so good. Also yeah. that, that in like that in it, uh, innate domain or whatever, um, that he made where it's just like the hands. Yeah, dude, that was beautiful. It was really at. spooky. Um, yeah, I just, that, that whole backstory was so beautiful and it enriched the character. And I agree. I totally was, I was, I was prepared for his death. Yeah. I was. And in fact, I felt better having seen that. Yeah. I, I felt that I could more readily accept his death. Right. Upon seeing that backstory. And he, you have that same moment with him. Even that moment. And then when fucking like, Yuji crashes in and, and it's, it's like, just like, I, uh, everything gets fucked up. It's yeah. so awesome. It's perfect. And, and I think too, like to the level, cause like there was also a part of me, like when they were going through his backstory where I felt like that was a while ago, you know, I don't know if you got that, that feeling, but like when he was going through the bakery shit, like even like when he does like, when he's like, how's your shoulder feel now? And then she's like genuinely like thanking him. And he's like, hmm. And then he calls, um, sexy guy. Go Gio. Yeah. And is like, don't laugh. I'm coming back. And it was like, and that was like the moment that he actually like, so it was like recent, like this was his turn. Yeah. And I was like, Oh fuck. I also think it's so cool that he's more like a, he's more of like a cowboy. Like he's not like, He's like a joker. Yeah. Like he's not with the squad, but he's with the squad. Yeah. You know, like it's like he he's there. Like, God, and I still like that moment when like he takes off his tie and is like, all right, I'm in overtime now. And he's like, yeah, oh shit. Dude. And his like spiritual power just like jumps up like eight notches. Oh yeah, man. So what do we have look to look forward to? Now let me ask you this, and I don't sure. know if you know this. Is is it just gonna keep going? Um, or, I, I, or is that, is there going to be a break? I got the feeling that it was a break, but it apparently felt like a break, but then it said, but then it advertised episode 14, like pretty immediately. Right away. Yeah. I think, um, it felt like a season finale. However, at least like, cause I was looking at, um, if Crunch- they take a break, it won't be long. No, no, it won't be like a, um, a re zero break, but like even re zero is coming back, which I'm super excited about. Oh, when does that come back? January. <gasps> Yeah, it's coming back like on the I think the ninth or the fourteenth. Get the fuck out! Yeah, of Yeah, it's coming back soon. Oh, dude. Well, because like the thing was is they had the season finished. It's just like they're throwing a Game of Thrones style where it's like we can do we can break it up into two parts and get you really excited. Well, yeah. Uh, and of course, I am. I feel like that's the norm though with anime, right? Because like that's kind not typically of, really not, not. Well, I should say recently. Yeah, recently. It sure. Seems, it seems to be a trend that I've seen in a couple of series where it's like. Like I'm taking a break. Yeah. What, like, what the that's fuck happened how, to burn the witch? Because that's it's how still sitting at three fucking episodes. It's like I want more of Reverse London, yeah, bro. Yeah, I don't know. Um, the, it's like the, uh, it's like slime was uh, is supposed to be that way. Slime was supposed to air half of an oct- half in October right. and then half in the spring. And then, so I guess now it's going to air just the whole half in the sp- really. I think so. Oh Apparently my! Apparently it's just God. the second season of slime. Dude, it's, just, it's at least on the Crunchyroll like had like. When I was like, check out the the winter lineup. Like, you don't want to miss out on all the stuff that's coming back. It's like, I I did feel a, and it, and it happens every time now. But like, I felt like a serious like loss of content. Like, I, oh yeah, it's been a while since I was like, oh, it's gone. Well, slime feels very much like a um like an RPG. That is exactly what it is. I think that that's what makes it so appealing. Like, you need to, okay. And and uh, and what's the other one? Doctor that... Stone. No, not Doctor Stone. I mean, yes, Doctor Stone. Stone. I need to watch that. But fucking <sighs> Shield Hero. Shield Hero's coming back. Yeah, oh, Goblin Slayer's God. getting a second season. I don't think in <sighs> winter, but fuck, man. I hope that Goblin Slayer's second season is not like the Goblin's fucking Crown? OVA. Yeah, that was God. Crazy. It was so shit. Was so bad. It, it was it, so disappointing. It was, it was almost. Why as would you take such a yeah. fucking badass character and then make him shit just on it. A, just the whole plot of that was Dog, just so It was so the same dumb. as like One Punch Man season two. It's like you just took an awesome thing and shit on it. You know what? Also, else I've decided is dumb. Just what? a quick detour, and then back before we speak more about anime, Batman's backstory. It is dumb. It's bullshit. It's the same with Broly, dude. Why the fuck okay. would those rich ass people be walking through an a alley? Back alley? First of all, why the fuck would they even 
be Why would they at not a public have a guard theater? Without guards. Why would they you even be out at a public be... theater? And then, like, oh, well, we're waiting on Alfred. I mean, I suppose, like, like well, okay, but here's the thing. Like, it's kind of like when someone's, like, in My Hero Academia, they're like, he can't run on that wall like that. It's like, dog, he's shooting fire out of his hands. Like, it's kind of the same with Batman, where it's like, there are people who are literally gods in that universe. Like, it's not so, like, I, I feel like at that point, it's like, you kind of have to suspend your belief in that in that regard. Well, I just mean, like, people always shit on Superman because he's OP, right? But it's like... I actually like Superman. I prefer Superman, and his story makes more sense. And by the way, he the reason that he's not OP is that if he was literally anywhere else in the universe, you could squash him like a butt. Yeah. Also, I thought it was really funny that I think I sent it to you where it's like Batman and it's like for uh, like Halloween or something. Or no, it was for Christmas. He was like taking kryptonite and like painting it red and then like making it look like candy apples. Oh, and yeah. And I wrote to my best buddy, Clark Kent. He was like, Merry Christmas, bitch. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. Sending out the- if we're gonna talk about shitty backstories, dude, Broly, yeah, worst. He is literally. Uh, they did like, they did fix it in the 2018, which is actually a really fun time to watch. Like it is really also because like Frieza just gets his ass handed to him for like five minutes. It's great. oh, that's cool. It's so fun because like in in the original, Broly is. Uh, he, he is the legendary Super Saiyan, but it's because like when he was born, he's born of like low blood, but his power level is like ten thousand. Back before uh, Akira Toriyama was like, we need to cut that shit out with the power levels because it ain't yeah. working anymore. And so like they cast him off. Um, they were gonna kill him. They couldn't kill him, so they just like sent him off or whatever. But like as a child, he was next to Goku, and Goku was incessantly crying. And so his trigger is the word Kakarot. Right. That's what turns him into the ultimate Super Saiyan. And, like, even in, like, Team Four Star's version of it, like, Vegeta's, like, having this, like, crisis of conscience where he's like, he's so fucking cool, but that's so dumb. Yeah. It's so cool, but it's so dumb. But in, like, the 2018 version, it's um, it, it's not that. Like, the thing that transforms him into the, the legendary Super Saiyan is, like, Frieza is watching him fight. He wants Broly to kill uh, Goku and Vegeta because he can't do it. So, like, there's a point where he decides, like, the only way to get Broly to actually, like, snap is to kill his dad. So he just shoots his dad in the chest and is like, Broly, look, they killed your dad. And then he goes, ham. And then, like, they're deciding, like, how to figure it out. Like, Goku leaves. Like, you know when Goku leaves? Like, he's fought gods. Like, it's time to get the fuck out. (laughs) So he dips out with Vegeta. He, like, instant teleports out. And so then there's just like five minutes of Broly just beating the fuck out of Frieza while they're figuring out what to do. It's literally like, do you think that would work? And then it cuts back to Broly just like snapping Frieza's neck in half. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, it's awesome. Um, um, but yeah, that's that's the worst backstory in my opinion. So what, what uh, do you want a word? Because I'm going to get a word this week. Oh, sure. What's the word? Hummingbird. Well, you can. I mean, you you you'll. I'll tell you how to do it. Okay. But you pick. You'll pick a number, and then you'll okay. get a word for the year. Okay. My word this year was mindfulness. Okay. And so I've tried to do that. I've tried to be mindful about yeah. like experiencing what I'm experiencing while I'm experiencing it. Sure. Yeah. Sounds that, mindful to me. It makes sense. Um, but I'm interested to see what it'll be next year because next year, I mean, I've planned. We're gonna have a new series on the channel. Yeah. Um, we're going to, I'm going to have at least one new album, uh, acoustic airship. I'm finally going to make nice. Um, and then I got to show you the song that Kyle wrote. If all go, uh, it's probably just going to make me mad. Yeah. If all goes, if all goes well, uh, I'll start on Ikigai next year and that's my anime album yeah. which will be my third hip hop album I um, oh also I have several some of the, the finished stuff to show you it's uh, this uh, join the party while it's delayed um, it's it's way better than Attack it's, of Opportunity I, I gotta be honest man like, and, and I said this before and it's not just because I'm on it because honestly that just gives it a demerit in my eyes oh my God. but um, like legitimately like the, the actual beats and the features and the quality of what's what I've seen so far, just from like the rough, like raw edits. Like, yeah. That's why, like, and and actually, I will say, like, it. I think it actually made my rapping easier because, like I said, when I first went in, I was like, I'm gonna sound like a fucking tryhard. And then you showed me like um, the Chimera song. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, all right, 
I'm not going to be the best rapper on this album. I'm not even going to fucking try. I'm going to try to be like third coolest on the album. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I'm going for. Yeah, man. And that's what I that's what I tried to envision. It was fun. Um, and it's, I think that it'll turn out well. And then, you know, the anime, I'm, if I'm getting that fucking doubler, oh, yeah. I don't know when I'm getting it, but I'm getting it. And, Fuck. uh, when I get it, all bets are off. I'll be fucking turning out beats like nobody's business. And yeah. I'll just make my own. Beats. Somebody call Dre. <laughs> Cause I'm making beats. Oh my God. We got to figure out a way to get Mark Rebier One of those things. Oh, dude, yeah. The only thing, though, Can I think that imagine? is like he thrives in that environment of creating it on the spot. Like he's he's one of and those that's more of a like, tool for like actually creating. Like, and then yeah. like there's and interestingly enough with a tool like that, there's more work done in post. Oh, for sure. Than yeah. when you're actually using it. I think that's, and that's the where weird he thing, excels like, is when he's doing the thing. It's one of those moments where it's like it's like a George Carlin or like, um, you know, even like just anybody like it's it's one of those strange moments where um it, it seems almost like his default communication is that. Right, right. Like, that he wouldn't, like, I can't imagine. Uh, <laughs> there is, a, like, I do follow him on, like, Instagram and stuff. Because, like, come on, he's hot. But, like, I'm not gay. But, like, for Mark Rebier, maybe. Um, <laughs> Probably. Like, yeah. 74%. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much there for it. <laughs> um, he's, he, it. It almost seems like that's. He's found his mode. Like, I think that's what I've always really had trouble with, like, growing up. Because, like, I always had options for different, like, instruments and, like, mediums and different things to, to experience or try. And I never really found the thing that, like, felt like like speaking. You know what I mean? And, like, that's – he's one of those people where it's like, he fucking found his thing. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's – he he found the way to which he can communicate his feelings. Yeah. In a way that, like, I haven't – I still don't know. Yeah. Um, Well, I think that I kind of found that with hip hop, like, because it's just like, oh, here's a medium where it's really all about words and how fast you can put them out there and put them in. Oh, dude, that's another thing that I wanted to bring up. Mm -hmm. This is just like food for thought that I thought of recently, Um, mostly when I was like thinking about learning Japanese so that I could sing Inferno. Music. Music is such a music is such a thing that makes our culture so differently, but this is why. And I'd never thought of this before. And it, maybe it'll seem obvious to you, but for me, I'd never really considered it this way. It was a shower thought kind of thing. Different words rhyme in different languages. Yeah. So, like the the foundation of songwriting is completely different across the board because, because of that the, the pool from which you have to grab yeah is so different i mean i guess i never really it's, it's kind of like um cheese is just a loaf of milk kind of thing where it's like kind of but like it, i mean I the entire like the entire essence of like a piece of art is different and, yeah. and approached differently. I mean, I guess like, yeah because of their limitations of their own medium like in english the words sad and mad and bad all rhyme. And so based on that, you can create an idea with a rhyme scheme. I guess like in Japan, the words death and love might rhyme. Yeah. Well, it's the same. And so like, the, um, so actually the, like uh, it's, it's weird. Cause like in J- Japanese, like um, kawaii and kuai. Yes. Are, are cute and scary. Yes. You know, so it's stuff like that. Yeah, but then also from the rhyming standpoint, like, I don't fucking know what rhymes in Japanese, yeah. but I would imagine that it's not the same shit that rhymes there's, in uh, English. There's And so the likelihood of you seeing ideas put together the best part, is totally different. There's only one reason, and I'll, I'll show you the clip because it's the only part of uh, Devil Man Cry Baby that's even worth half of a shit, is that there's a group of, um, like, rappers like that are just like they'll show them like on the street and they'll just be like going at each other like it'll just be like a group of them like one will just like drop the beat and start beatboxing and one will start rapping over it and it's like really fucking solid um that's really the only part of devil man cry baby that i care to to remember it's yeah just like bullshit like people are always like oh my god devil man cry baby so good and it's like fucking it was stupid it's so stupid. So it's stupid. I think that maybe instead of resolutions, we should have challenges to one another. Okay. 
Um, I'm about that. I think that that should actually be a new norm that people do instead of the resolution. Instead of holding yourself to something, which is unlikely, right. <laughs> make someone else hold you to it and make it their thing. And yeah. so rather than it be, let's make 2021 a year of self-improvement brought upon by the constructive criticism of others. Yeah. So instead of... It takes, of, a, it takes a, particular type of person to be able to take that okay. so i would challenge you for 2021 to get to a place where you can animate okay i think that that's what you should spend your year doing i think you should spend your year finding a new like love project in the same way that like the additions were at the start yes find your new like passion project i like that and make it and put it out. That's important um, because there is a lot of shit that I make that I just kind of not make. saying that you don't like still enjoy or like are passionate about. No, no, series, I know what you mean. I mean, there's yeah. there's a lot of shit that I need I to think make. If you look at like the original Gangsta Edition, and you look at like Florida Part Eight. Yeah, you yeah. You start to see some differences. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, it'd be nice to try something new. Yeah. So, and I encourage everybody. Yeah. Whoa, that was super strange. That was very weird. I that don't know what strange. was going on there. Um, one last time. One last time. For me, fuck that bell. Go follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Novik Banana or send emails to NovikBanana at We're taking a hiatus. Yeah. I don't know how long that's going to be. I don't know if it's going to be two months or two years. But Hopefully not two years. The No Big Banana Podcast will come back. Yeah. And in the meantime... Better than ever. In the meantime, I'm going to get myself into a position wherein I can have a producer. It'll be because not once I have a producer, bigger, I could just get them to do whatever I want. It'll be more bananas. You know what I mean? That's yeah. what I really need. It'll it's be just so like bananas. A slave. It'll be crazy. Like a, don't wait. Um, no, 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 no. I need no. like no, not that. Like an indent. No, like no. more like, like a bro. Employee. Like a bro. Like a producer. Yeah. Like a produ- Like somebody that can produce things for me. I'm not a fucking slave. What a bad way to end this with. <laughs>